let's cut the head off of mythology of traveling, just like Harry Hamlin did in 1981 in Clash of the Titans. I bet you never thought you'd get a 1981 reference in this video about traveling. Well, wow, that's a weird reference again. For those that do not know, my name is Jeffrey Rutledge, the creator and founder of Officiating Born. I'm coming to you to start a five-part series on the rule of traveling. The reason we misunderstand this rule, because this rule has so many elements to it. I want to make sure that I cover these in different parts so that we cannot confound different parts of the rule and call this rule properly. Traveling, in my opinion, is the hardest rule in basketball because it has so many opportunities for us to observe traveling or to call traveling in a particular game. Every time a player has possession of the ball or stops a dribble or starts to shoot, we can have a possibility for a travel violation. As I said, this is the beginning of a five-part series in which I'm going to cover different elements of traveling. Today, I'm just going to cover the first part of it, and it will be part one, what we will call mythology, or the mythology of traveling. Because before we can unpack this rule completely, we need to kind of understand why people think certain things are actually the rule when they are clearly not stated. Now, before we get started, the rule of traveling is pretty much the same at all levels. The NBA and FIBA has a different rule when it comes to traveling. They have some little bit different element of when there is a pivot foot or what they call a zero step. This video is pretty much going to unpack the National Federation rules, which is high school, NCAA rules for both men's and women, and pretty much any other standard level rule other than, again, the NBA and I believe FIBA. Now, let's unpack this thing about mythology. So before we get into some examples, let me break down what actually mythology means. Mythology in its simplest form is a body of myths. So for the purposes of this video, mythology is basically a branch of knowledge that deals with myths. It's a popular belief or assumptions that has grown up around someone or something. In this case, we are really talking about why do people think that something is a part of the traveling rule that is not. So let's get into some examples of exactly what that means. So let us deal with the big myth when it comes to traveling. Traveling has a lot of myths and we sometimes subscribe to these, which makes us to incorrectly call the rules improperly, or especially the traveling rule improperly. So how many steps does a player get before traveling? One, two, or three. So let's unpack this myth. Traveling rule doesn't involve any steps in the criteria of the rule at the National Federation level and the NCAA level. Traveling is mostly about the pivot foot. So whatever you have determined that the pivot foot is, that is often what is the criteria for traveling. So if you know what the pivot foot is and you know what the pivot foot isn't, that is how you really determine what traveling is in most rule sets. So if we can identify the pivot foot or the pivot feet in some cases, then we can make the correct ruling appropriately. Again, steps are not the issue. It's the pivot foot or the pivot feet. When are they established and how they're established? And then what can we do with them? Okay, let's deal with another myth that is often talked about. Can a player catch their own shot? Yes, actually a player can catch their own shot during a try or a tap ends when the ball handler has shot the ball. So once it ends, they can go after the basketball. 
So the shooter can always go after this, regardless of whether it hits the backboard, the rim, or if it's just completely missed. They can go get their own shot. Now, the only place that it is really known to be illegal is at the NBA level. Every other level, NCAA, men's, women's, and National Federation, which is high school rules, you can go get your own shot. If it is determined by the official that you have shot the ball, you can go get it regardless if anybody touches it or if any type of thing is touched during that particular shot. Let's unpack another myth. Can a player pass the ball to themselves? It is never a travel to pass the ball to yourself. Actually, a pass by definition is not passing the ball to yourself. But as a rule or as something that we often use, passing the ball and going getting the ball in itself is never a travel. It can only be a travel if the requirements of a dribble that is started are not met properly. You could, by rule, pass the ball and start a dribble. And if you do certain things with your pivot foot, that would be a violation. But we must understand that there is a big difference between passing the ball and going getting the ball and actually starting a dribble. But if we understand the definition of what a dribble is, this oftentimes will not be something we will misunderstand. Well, let's not use this particular part of the rule and say they have committed a traveling violation because of this part of the rule. Let's unpack this myth. Can a player travel while bobbling or fumbling the ball? First of all, fumble is an accidental loss of the ball. So in order to travel, you must have possession of the ball at all times during the course of your movement. If you have lost the ball or accidentally lost the ball, it can never be a travel. And again, remember, accidental loss, meaning you have, you have not on purpose somehow lost control of the ball. So even if you're bobbling it, even though your feet are moving in several different directions, it can never be a travel. And first of all, players can always go and recover their own fumbled ball. So if they fumbled the ball, they can always go get it without penalty of anything. Again, a fumble is an accidental loss of possession of the basketball. Here's another myth. A player cannot slide with the ball no matter how far. First of all, a player can slide as far as the momentum takes them while getting possession of a loose ball. So if you see a player that slides, let's say just for argument's sake, 10 feet on the floor, their momentum is carrying them that entire time, they can slide the complete 10 feet. They can even, in, in by rule case, Turn over as long as all in the possession is they are getting the ball and their momentum has taken them there. So this is never a violation. There's no pivot foot or pivot side or any kind of, of demarcation to say that a player cannot slide as far as they, as they can and as their momentum takes them. Now, if their momentum stops or if their momentum stops in a certain situation at a time, now they are not allowed to do some movements and then they're restricted on their movement, whether they turn to the side or whether they flip over. But they can never, ever, ever be traveling just because of how far that they slide on the floor. This is often miscalled at the lower level. Once again, this is the first part of a five part series on the rule traveling. Don't forget to subscribe, like the videos, and hit the bell so you can get the updates on the other traveling videos that I am posting coming up here very soon. I hope I didn't offend anyone with a 1981 movie reference. I'm sure some of you weren't even alive during that time. 
But thank you for watching the video to the end and see you on some upcoming videos from Officiating Born.